the next presentation post number 89 OCT and threshold visual field test in diagnosis of anterior visual pathway tumors the authors are w Willem WHD Barnagala CPB the, author, the presenting author Wevella Villa WHD uh, good afternoon uh, neuro-ophthalmological diseases present to ophthalmologists with varying uh, symptomatology, sometimes mimicking other ophthalmic diseases. Uh, so it is important for us to look at the optic disc very carefully and notice the subtle changes and uh, correlate these features with uh, the optical coherence tomography as well as the vis threshold visual fields. Uh, I'm describing three cases here. The first case was a 58-year-old uh, male uh, who presented with deterioration of vision. There has been a recorded vision of 660 about a month back and the patient came with deterioration of vision in his uh, left amblyopic eye. Uh, and then uh, the optic disc showed characteristic features of uh, non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, uh, namely the inferior sectoral edema. Uh, but since the presentation was rather vague uh, because there was no sudden altitudinal field loss, uh, rather he had uh, deterioration of vision uh, in his uh, left amblyopic eye. Uh, so we uh, ordered visual fields uh, and the visual field showed instead of showing the characteristic altitudinal field loss, he had unrecordable visual fields in his affected eye and the other eye also showed a uh, temporal hemianopia. Uh, so this together with the optical coherence uh, tomography, you know the uh, visual fields could be subjective but the optical coherence tomography showed an object objective change where we could see deviation of the uh, deviation from normal of the ganglion cell layer uh, which was uh, quite thin, generally thin in the affected side and there was a nasal uh, thinning, nasal deviation in the unaffected side side also and at the same time looking at the RNFL which you see in the middle part of the uh, OCT picture uh, there you can see that there is uh, thickening of RNFL as well as uh, on the other unaffected side also there is uh, th thinning. Uh, so, uh, because of that, we have ordered uh, neuroimaging and uh, that has shown a, a glioblastoma. The second case was a patient who was treated for glaucoma uh, because she had 0.7 cupping and a slightly high intraocular pressure. But if you look carefully, you can see that the cupping is horizontal rather than vertical and her first visual field showed, uh, uh, though it looked like an arcuate scotoma in her left eye, the right eye showed uh, uh, obeying the midline and you can see the RNFL is also normal uh, which is which is abnormal in glaucoma most striking feature is the hemi by nasal thinning of the uh, ganglion cell layer uh, so this was again suspicious so uh, she had actually a pituitary tumor uh, then the third case presented with uh, severe headache vomiting and uh, uh, and, and, and she uh, casually mentioned a peripheral field loss. So the uh, optic this showed very subtle edema, uh, giving an impression of benign intracranial hypertension. But since uh, of her visual field defect, which showed to be, which confirmed to be a bitemporal hemianopia, uh, and uh, with minimal uh, thinning of ganglion cell layer, she was imaged and she was found to have uh, a, a, a pituitary tumor again, uh, which was medically treated. Uh, so it is important for us to uh, look for any atypical features, although these patients present with typical uh, certain features of a particular condition, uh, because of the atypical, con uh, atypical features, uh, you have to always uh, do the neuroimaging and then uh, you will find these uh, surprising uh, changes. Thank you. The paper is open for discussion. So uh, now uh, basically, so what are, what are the indications that are laid down now? Uh, initial diagnosis was different from the first. So uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, in the first case, of course, it was if you looked only at the uh, in initial clinical presentation, it would have been gone as a uh, NAION. Uh, but since there was a recorded visual change, uh, which was deterioration rather than rather than sudden loss. 
there has been some sort of rapid deterioration rather than uh, sudden loss and mostly more than that uh, the presence of uh, other eye the opposite eye in NAION the other eye should be normal uh, so this patient had in his uh, threshold visual fields there was a temporal hemianopic field field loss uh, and uh, and the and since this is a subjective one, uh, the objective uh, the OCT is useful as an objective measure of any ganglion cell loss, the nerve fiber loss, uh, which showed a change in the uh, you can see it in the bottom part of the first uh, frame uh, that there is thinning in the uh, affected dye and a half field thinning in the unaffected dye. So this is indicative of a chasmal lesion. That is why we uh, imaged the chiasma and uh, actually he had a tumor there. Uh, in the second and third cases, of course, again, there are atypical features, as I have mentioned, uh, horizontal more than vertical cupping, uh, 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 visual field defect, which is uh, obeying midline, which actually in her case, while we were waiting for the, uh, the results, there was a progression also. So because of that, uh, it was more uh, confirmative of a possibility of a chiasmal tumor rather than glaucoma. Uh, in the third case was an acute presentation. Uh, she would have had uh, imaging anyway because uh, any uh, benign intracranial hypertension has to be imaged. Uh, but uh, her visual field showed uh, temporal hemianopia, which actually uh, helped us to do the pituitary cuts and uh, diagnose the tumor early. So in the all, all locations, the initial diagnosis was challenged. The initial di diagnosis was challenged because we looked at the subtle features. Any, any message you want to give for primary care doctors or the general doctors? Uh, yes, uh, this is actually mostly in the field of ophthalmologists. So it has to be a lesson for ophthalmologists just to, uh, just, uh, you know, in, uh, without initially going by only the clinical features, uh, you have to order your investigations carefully and thoughtfully uh, and interpret them in, uh, for example, the second case. Uh, initial, initially, it was uh, interpreted as a glucomatous field loss uh, uh, without uh, noticing that the obeying of midline, the vertical midline. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to the presenter.